So this is the type of stuff you want to watch. <laughs> you sadistic mother. Yes, yes, it's your boy Coach Sambo, and as you know, quality first. When my thumbnail says, I'll show you the most painful moves and breaking, I will show you the most painful moves and breaking. Gonna be honest, I'm pretty proud of this compilation right here. I think I did manage to really get at least 80% of the most painful things that have been going on. And let's start off with this right here, just B-Boy Toys busting out a thread pike and then dropping down to the tip of his elbow. And look at this inverted twisted arm air baby by Lee Lu. That's gotta be a pretty painful one. Now, 360. The lotus just falling on your behind. Gotta be pretty painful. Not for the knees, but you know, basically for your behind. It's not a movie could bust out every practice. But let's get this one straight out of the way, right? Kid Columbia's belly flip flop. Especially if you're new to breaking, you never saw Kid Columbia before. You're like, oh my god. However, there's proper technique involved, right? Most of the time, he does land pretty flat with all of his body parts landing at the same time. Kind of like this suicide move right here. If you land flat. You distribute the weight and it's kind of doable. Then this one is B-Boy Sick. I got a lot of respect for B-Boy Sick, but this, I never understood how we could execute this double drop to his two knees. And I saw him in the past do it way higher than this. However, that's gotta be painful. There's no way around it, man. Like, and it doesn't even look like he's wearing knee pads. So this guy attempted a double air flare and he lands it on his shoulder and doing a great job combining it to the windmill right after that. But let's be honest, that drop looks pretty painful. Imagine doing that on the concrete. Next up, we have Meinen Bruder Lil Amok with this flying backspin amazing move however that landing you know then I came across a lot of very high jumps to shoulder this move looks pretty popular man people love jumping from a high altitude onto their shoulder especially my main man Salo scouting the internet I came across a lot of variations and the first one is this guy doing like this shoulder jump but implementing a like a 360 rotation which is pretty insane landing looks really rough though man then we got my man clash doing it from an air flare 1.5 and then landing it with the arm completely to the side. And I know the guy's really flexible, so the pain level might be all right, but you know, just imagine you and me busting out that move. We're not walking straight for at least six months. Then there's another variation where people jump the same way into that shoulder, but they're not jumping into the shoulder. If you look very closely, they're jumping into this mini air chair kind of freeze, which I do talk about briefly in my air chair tutorial, if you want to learn that freeze. But you're always going to find a b-boy that just try and takes it to the next level. For example, this guy right here, it wasn't enough just jumping on his back. You know, he had to do it from a stage, of course. <laughs> That's not a crash. That's intentional. Man, like there's no technique, nothing whatsoever besides him just trying to prove the judges or the crowd that he basically does not feel pain. And then, of course, we have this guy right here. I shared this on my story like two years ago. But when I watch it, man, it's like insane. Again, it's intentional. His name is Mayo Kilo, by the way. Give the man some love. All right, let's move on to like head moves. So yeah, doing basic combos and jumping onto your head could be pretty painful. However, like for example, this one, you see there's proper technique behind that. So it's kind of doable if you practice the right way and you use a little bit of your brains. Then we have Salo just dropping down on his head. Is there technique involved? <laughs> Maybe just a little bit, but mostly I think it's a mixture of uh, cocones, testosterone, and adrenaline. <laughs> then we have Earthquake with this backwards flip onto his head, which went viral, so I'm pretty sure most of you guys already saw it. And he's executing it so well that I actually am asking myself, would it hurt? I actually don't think it would hurt, to be honest. Then we got Stuart with this blinded flip to his head straight to an air chair. Is this one painful? I know it looks painful, especially if you're not very experienced with breaking. You would think... However, again, good technique right here. And of course, we have tons of other head variation moves. For example, this one, we have Abes from France doing a backflip to his head straight into a head spin drill. This is insane. If you want to do something like that and you're just slightly off target, man, you could really hurt yourself bad. Like I'm talking about spinal injuries that will haunt you for the rest of your life. Talking about spinal injury, look at this dude. His name is Yu Kimo doing a flip to his head again with the 180 but look at his landing position <laughs> bro landing it on the side of his head out of all the head moves we have right here i think this is the craziest one however look at this kid man hopping head spins imagine doing this while having a headache <laughs> However, good technique though. Then we have this elbow air flare to the kind of folding into his back right there, but then straight away pushes himself back up to the back of his head and just like spins there for a little while. You can see Justin judging this event in the back and his reaction is worth a thousand words at this point. He did not see it coming. Plus I want to remind you guys that this is not on mats or on like a spring floor or whatever. This is like a hard concrete floor. I don't know who this guy is, but he's definitely Russian or like Ukrainian, like Eastern. We're the complete opposite of like soccer 
soccer players that start crying for like nothing. You want to make the hardest moves, the most impossible moves, and even the most painful moves look like it ain't All right, so wrist moves, very painful stuff. Let's start off with this guy doing a back handspring onto his wrist and then performing a 90 on that wrist. Just try doing a six step on your wrist and you will see straight away how painful that could be. So most of the time there is proper technique involved when people are doing stuff on their wrist. The technique is, I'm gonna share this secret with you guys really quick. They're not spinning here, they're spinning here, which is basically on the bone. So you're not putting pressure on the joint itself. However, I do think there are people that spin here or jump from here, but they're just immune to pain somehow, man. Like this guy, for example, man, doing jackhammers on his freaking wrist. What the crap? Full weight again and again and again on that wrist. Definitely painful. However, respect. I salute you for pushing the bar. This guy I haven't seen in a while, but yo, this guy's legendary doing multiple air flares on his wrist. And then we have coin drops, especially if you're really gonna jump high or really gonna jump very far with your coin drop. It looks pretty painful. However, I'm talking out of experience right here because back in my young days when I was a young whippersnapper, I would, uh, uh, I would run and just do like a very far coin drop back in the day. It wasn't that painful though. And by the way, if you want to learn coin drops, I have a very good coin drop tutorial right here. Link in the description down below. Now let's move on to some flips. I got a few flips for you guys. Starting out with this 360 flip by my man Coco, represent EXG. It's not a 360 flip. It's actually a 540 straight flat onto the back. Now again, because he's landing flat, that's definitely improving the odds of him not feeling too much pain. But again, if if you're slightly off with these kind of moves, then you will feel pain. This one, doing a backflip and then landing off on your back or behind. I don't know what the idea was exactly, but I got a feeling that was pretty painful too. And then we have my Buddha again, especially in his young days. He was pretty crazy back then. He still is though. A Webster and past the feet and landing it on his shoulder. I never knew what he wanted to do exactly. Did he want to go to a shoulder freeze or did he just want to hit his shoulder on the floor and then get out of there? I have no idea. I'll, I'll ask the dude next time I see him. Or maybe little Amok, my friend, if you're watching this video, you just leave it in the comments down below what your goal or your idea originally was after this move. Now for somebody who's been coaching for a long time, would I recommend you guys to try these kind of moves? Well, yes, and no. If you would do these extreme type of moves and that's something that makes you happy, then go for it. However, keep in mind, the more risky your stuff is, the harder it will be for you to win battles. That's something I explained very well in my new Prep for Battle Masterclass that you can find on my website. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys are inspired from this video. So you can walk into your training tomorrow and start working on those hopping head spins. This is your boy Coach Sambo, your online b-boy coach. And at the end of the day, my good friends, when you think about it, it's just all about that b-boy shit. Peace.